Good day, my name is Robert Weissert. I'm a math teacher in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. I'm gonna be walking through some EOC reviews geared toward the Math 3 final exam. Um, as you probably are aware, the Math 3 final exam is a state exam. It is composed of 60 questions, mostly multiple choice, but there are some numeric entry, some drag and drop. It is all calculator active. You'll have access to Desmos, and in some schools, you'll have a handheld TI-84 calculator or equivalent as well, or you can bring your own graphing calculator. So you have a lot of options as far as getting calculator access to it. These videos are going to be covering five review handouts. I'll have the review handouts linked in these videos. Um, and each handout is going to be broken up into a, a few different parts each, so that way each video is not super long. This video is going to be covering the first two parts of the first EOC review. Uh, which is going to be dealing with parallelograms and centers of triangles. If you'd like to see what uh, uh, standards in the North Carolina Math 3 curriculum are there, you can read these uh, on the screen. I'm not going to read them out for you. They're going to be covering properties of parallelograms. So I want you to pause the video, maybe jot these down or draw some pictures to kind of go along with them. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, so you might be dealing with problems that involve solving for a variable um, setting two opposite sides equal. You'll also know that the opposite angles are congruent to each other, so you can also set opposite angles equal to each other if that's the case. Also, consecutive angles are supplementary, meaning they add to 180. So any two angles that are uh, next to each other, not across from each other, they're going to add to 180. Finally, I think the most common one is um, where diagonals bisect each other, meaning those diagonals will cut each other in half. Um, so in a parallelogram, not equal to each other, but diagonals will cut each other in half, and that point right there will be the midpoint of both diagonals. Let's consider on a couple of problems. All right, part one, question one. This question is actually from the North Carolina 2018 released EOC items, number 23. Here's the question. In parallelogram MNPT, the measure of angle M is 6x plus 10 degrees, and the measure of angle N is 5x plus 10.5 degrees. How many degrees is angle T? So this question wants to know a degree measure. The first thing you should do in this problem is draw a parallelogram. Next, you want to label it. When you label it, you want to go in the order that the letters you see in the name of the parallelogram. So you don't want to skip, go consecutive, M, N, P, T, like you're going around in a circle. Since we're dealing with two angles, we want to label inside of the diagram as to show where the angles are. You can see these two angles are consecutive because they're next to each other. You can also look at the M and N next to each other in the name to kind of tell that. So in this problem here, we want to actually make sure that they're supplementary. So we're going to set them, we're going to add them together and we're going to set them equal to 180. Your equation will be set up like 6x plus 10 plus 5x plus 10.5 equals 180. Then you'll combine your like terms and solve for x. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot. Combining like terms on the left side gives us 11x plus 20.5 equals 180. Next, you'll want to subtract the 20.5 from each side. You'll get 159.5. Next, you want to divide by 11 on both sides. Doing so gets you 14.5. Make sure you're using your work, um, checking your work with the calculator if you need to. Um, from there, you want to know how many degrees is angle T. So we got to figure out which angle is angle T equal to. Well, we know that opposite angles are congruent. So I can set measure of angle T equal to measure of angle N. So since I want to know the degree measure of angle T, I can plug in the value of X for the expression that's at the measure of angle N and get that degree measure. Let's do that. We're going to double check that with a calculator. As you can see, when you plug in 14.5 into 5x plus 10.5, you get 83. So 83 degrees will be our answer. You can jot that down. Let's go to the next question, question number two. Question two is dealing with a rhombus. It says in rhombus ABCD, diagonals AC and BD intersect at point E. If the perimeter of the rhombus is 60 inches and diagonal AC is 24 inches, 
What is the length of diagonal BD? Two things you need to know about a rhombus before you can begin this problem. One is that all four sides in a rhombus are equal. So we want to make sure we mark those sides equal. The next thing we want to know is that the diagonals actually cross, you know, they have the same properties as a parallelogram, but they have an additional property because of those equal sides and that they cross at 90 degree angles. So since the diagonals do bisect each other, of course, they're going to split each other in half like that, but they're also going to make a right angle right in the center of them. That'll help us solve this problem. Another thing that you may need to uh, refresh on is that in a right triangle, because we're going to be dealing with right triangles in this question, um, you can solve for the missing side of a right triangle if you know two sides. So you might remember A, B, and C. And the Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C is the longest side, the hypotenuse. Those things you're going to need to know to be able to solve this problem. So pause the video, see if you can give this a shot, and we'll work it out. All right, guys. Now, I have the diagonal AC marked on the outside just so we can kind of draw inside of that problem. Um, first thing I want to do is if I know that the diagonal is 24, I can split that in half and say each half of those diagonals is 12. So A to E and E to C are both going to be 12. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at that perimeter. Perimeter means the distance around. And I'm going to divide that by four because each side is going to be one quarter of that. So one side is going to be 15, because when you do 60 divided by 4, you get 15. Again, check yourself in a calculator if you need to. Um, so each side of those is going to be 15 inches. I'll not worry about the um, unit measurements on here. So the question wants to know, what's the length of diagonal BD? I want to know from B to D. So what I can do first is I can break this up into a smaller right triangle. It doesn't really matter where you think about that right triangle, but I'm going to look at it like that. And I'm going to break up that 12, 15, and I'm going to just call this x. That segment length from b to e, I can solve using Pythagorean theorem. So I would set it up like x squared plus 12 squared is equal to 15 squared. Help your calculator if you need to. Um, I'm going to just do the squares. Uh, in my head because I know the numbers, but again, use a calculator if you need to. 12 squared is 144. 15 squared is 225. Since the hypotenuse has the number, we'll want to subtract the 144 from both sides. And doing that subtraction, you're going to get x squared is equal to, let's see, 1. Let's see, 22 minus 14 is 8. So x squared is 81, which means x is going to be the square root of 81, which is 9. Knowing that 9 is the value of x, I can say BE is 9 and answer the question. The question wants to know what's the length of diagonal BD. BD is going to be 9 plus that segment length is going to be 9 as well because they're equal to each other. So BD is going to be 18. Nine times two or nine plus nine is going to be 18 inches. And that is the answer to this question. Let's go on to the next section. You'll have a couple problems on the EOC dealing with triangle centers. And there's a few terms that you're going to need to know for this. Uh, one is that uh, triangles all have a median. A median is a segment that connects one side to the opposite midpoint, or excuse me, one vertex to the opposite midpoint. And if you draw all three of them, they meet at a point called a centroid. So that points here, a centroid. And that is a nice little relationship that splits that median up into a one to two relationship. So like if that's two inches, that's going to be four inches. And that distance from the vertex to the centroid is actually two thirds the length of the whole median. So if the whole median is six, then that's going to be four. Four is two thirds of six. And that works for all the medians. Angle bisectors, they cut the angles in half. I don't know if you can see these very well, but each of those angles is marked congruent. And there's quite a few properties on there, but the main thing is, is that they form a point where they all meet called the in-center, which is the same distance from each side of the triangle. We said it's equidistance. It's the center of a circle inscribed in the triangle. So that's kind of a nice little property. In-center is from the angle bisector. And then finally, we have perpendicular bisectors, which perpendicular means that they write, write at a 90-degree uh, angle, but they also bisect the sides. So you might see that side cut in half or that side cut in half, or that side cut in half. And they form a point 
where they all meet called a circumcenter, which is the center of a circle going around or circumscribing the circle. And that point is actually equidistant from all three vertices of the triangle. So it's going to be the same distance from all three vertices because those are all going to be a radius of that circle. So those properties will help us solve the couple questions that are following next. Okay, this is uh, part two, question number one. In triangle ABC, given the length AB is 15, BC is 20, and point F is the centroid, what is the length from A to F? So since they tell you point F is the centroid, then we can go back to those properties I just talked about, and we can say, if I want to know A to F and point F is the centroid, I know that AE is the median. That's a median here. So therefore, I know that that segment here from B to C is going to be split in half. And each of those segments are going to be uh, 10 units long since the whole thing from B to C is 20. The next thing I know is AF is going to equal 2 thirds of AE. So since I have a right triangle in this case, I can once again use Pythagorean theorem. And I can solve for that segment length A to E using that hypotenuse. Okay, So I'm going to call that just C. And we'll say 15 and 10. So you're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to help you and utilize your calculator on there to set up an equation using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'll say 15 squared plus 10 squared is equal to c squared. Why don't you pause the video, see if you can solve that out for c. All right, setting that up, you get 15 squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. 15 squared plus 10 squared is 325, as you can see on my calculator. And you'll want to take the square root of 325. So square root of 325 is about 18. I'm just going to round it to 18 just to make things a little bit easier. So we'll write that out. All right, so since I have the entire hypotenuse in the middle from A to E as around 18, now I can split that up. Now, I don't want to, what I do not want to do is divide 18 by 2. You want to actually divide 18 by 3. If you do that, 18 divided by 3 is going to give you 6. And that 6 is going to go right here on the smaller part of that median right there. So f to e is going to be 6. And then a to f is going to be 2 times that. So a to f will be 6 times 2, which is 12. Um, or you can just do uh, 2 thirds multiplied by 18, and you'll get 12 as well. 2 thirds of 18 is, again, 18 divided by 3 times 2. So that length from a to f is about 12. Remember, I rounded it, so it might not be exactly 12, but I'm going to call it 12 just to make the calculations a little bit easier. All right, let's look at the next question. All right, this question is dealing with a question that was also on the released items from the North Carolina 2018 released EOC. Um, this is question number 25. Um, there is not a lot of information on this problem. It says triangle PMT is shown below. We want to know the, the measure of segment PG. Now, PG is this length here, and I want to know how long that is. Uh, it doesn't give me any additional words for information, but it, tell, it does show me that these are bisected angles. So these are all angle bisectors. And then since those are angle bisectors, I know that this point right here is an in-center. And what is an in center is the center of a circle that is inscribed in the triangle. So if I draw myself a little circle there, that is basically telling me that there are a few segments that are equal to each other, KG, GH, and GJ. Now, if I look over here, I have the GH and GJ right there. So what I can do is I can set these two equal to each other, solve for X. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'll say gj is equal to gh. I do 2x minus 1 equals x plus 3 and solve it out. Uh, subtract the x from both sides. You're going to get x minus 1 equals 3. And then I can add 1 to that 3 to get x equals 4. Now, once I have the value of x, the question says, what's the length of segment pg? Now, pg is that length right there. So I'm going to actually take that value of x now that I know it. And I'm going to substitute that in for 4x plus 1. So pg is going to be 4 parentheses, 4 times 4, 
plus one, that's going to be 16 plus one. So that's going to give you 17 units. So the answer to that question is 17. That concludes all the uh, questions on this video dealing with parallelograms and triangles. I hope that was beneficial for you. The next video will be dealing with um, density, volume, uh, area, and cross-sections, more geometry stuff to come. Thanks for watching.